Blender versus 3ds Max. These are two of the most versatile 3D programs, but which one is better? Because discovering which program is specifically best for you gives you a huge advantage over the competition. So today we're going to examine the most important categories and either award a point to Blender or 3ds Max to give you all the information you need to make an informed decision and ultimately answer the question, which one is better? Our first category is learning curve. And this is an interesting one because if a program is easier to master, that means that you automatically have an advantage over the competition just by using that program. And it could potentially save you hundreds of hours of trial and error. Since the release of Blender 2.8, it has become widely known for its user-friendly interface and gradual learning curve. While 3ds Max is an industry standard software that fits into a specific part of a complex pipeline. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't learn 3ds Max, but for the vast majority of people, Blender is easier to pick up. It's more intuitive to new users while still having the ability to perform complex tasks. So for that reason, Blender wins this category. Its learning curve is more gradual. Our second category is community. This one is often overlooked, but without an expansive community, it's very difficult to learn anything new without hundreds of hours of trial and error. And this is especially true when you're first starting out. Even though both of these programs have a large community, there is a clear winner. Right now, Blender is the most used 3D program. And while the Autodesk suite of 3ds Max and Maya is a close second, Blender's community is simply larger, which means that it's much easier to find a solution to any barriers you run into while working in Blender. And while there are many great 3ds Max teachers and tutorials, the sheer amount of Blender users is ultimately what wins at this category. But our next category is much more competitive. Our third category, Category is editability. This is a crucial part of any 3D program because having a well-developed set of add-ons or plugins helps to improve both your speed and quality of work. So first of all, there is a difference in the way each of these programs is modified. Blender uses add-ons while 3ds Max uses plugins. In most cases, they accomplish essentially the same thing but they are fundamentally different. Add-ons simply add functionality to the program, but they don't change the actual program itself. While plugins are a type of add-on that integrate into an existing software and extend its functionality. Both Blender and 3ds Max have tons of amazing add-ons and plugins respectively but there is a clear winner for this category. Blender has access to a ton of awesome add-ons like hard ops, box cutter, flip fluids, and geo scatter, but it doesn't have access to industry standard plugins like Ziva, Thinking Particles, and Realflow. 3ds Max, on the other hand, does have access to those plugins. The access of these plugins alone sets 3ds Max apart from Blender in regards to editability. Because while Blender's add-on system is excellent, the industry grade plugins that 3ds Max has access to are simply more refined and have been used on feature films like Immortals and Resident Evil. So for all of those reasons, 3ds Max wins this category, but there is something extremely important that you need to understand about why it wins this category and if it even wins for you. Because the industry grade plugins that 3ds Max has access to are not free. They don't come pre-installed inside of Max. Building out 3ds Max with a powerful suite of plugins like Ziva, Thinking Particles, and Realflow will cost thousands. So if you are a hobbyist or freelancer that doesn't want to pursue a job in the industry, then for you, Blender wins this category because you don't need to have access to those industry grade plugins to be able to get your job done. You would just be spending extra money on plugins that you don't necessarily need. But if you want to work in a studio making movies or games and you don't care about the cost of the program, you just want the best tool, then 3ds Max definitely wins this category. Our next category is modeling. Modeling is essentially the backbone of any render. So having a robust tool set that allows you to create anything you can imagine is super important. And this is a very competitive category. Both of these programs excel at this, but there definitely is still a winner. 3ds Max was created in 1996, and from then on, it's been considered one of the best 3D modeling programs. 
but in the last 10 years, it's slowed down a good bit. Blender, on the other hand, is newer. It has only recently become competitive with professional grade visual effects work, but Blender is progressing rapidly. Because of this, many veteran 3DS Max users have jumped ship to Blender. This has really forced Autodesk to start reinvesting resources back into 3DS Max's development again. And considering the price of Max, this is really something that they should have been doing all along. Yet, even with all of that, both of these programs are at the cutting edge of modeling capabilities. Both Blender and 3ds Max have quite similar hard surface modeling systems. Different tools and shortcuts have different names, but basic tools like loop cut, bridge, extrude, and fill exist in both of these two programs. On top of this, both of these programs are very modular. You can add plugins to Max or add-ons to Blender to specifically refine the modeling systems to your specific needs. Yet, while both of these two programs have similar hard surface modeling systems, 3ds Max has access to an advanced NURBS system, which stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Blinds. This is somewhat similar to the Curves or the NURBS system that you can find in Blender, but it adds much more functionality, and it's very similar to Fusion 360, a powerful CAD program also owned by Autodesk. This creates a much more organic modeling experience that aids in creation of things like cars and planes that have sinuous or organic flow. Now Blender has its own curve system as well as its own nerve system, but the functionality just does not quite compare to what you can do inside of 3ds Max. However, Blender also has an advanced sculpting system that is canon in many ways to what you would find inside of ZBrush, the industry standard sculpting software. 3ds Max does have some basic sculpting features, but Blender has much more functionality. With all of those things considered, 3ds Max wins this category. Its modeling prowess through all the different 3D disciplines like ArcViz, Hard Surface, CAD style NURBS modeling, and many more is just better than Blender. The only edge that Blender has over 3ds Max when it comes to modeling is its well-developed sculpting system. But other than that, 3ds Max is just the better choice when it comes for modeling. Our next category is animation. This is one of the most important categories because having a streamlined animation system allows you to bring your vision to life. 3ds Max is owned by another parent company called Autodesk that also owns Maya. Now, Maya's specialty as a software is animation, and it's been used as the software of choice by animators for years. So while 3ds Max was able to inherit some of its systems from Maya, it's still very different. It has two major animation systems built into it for animating characters and objects. Character Studio and Cat, as well as Populate for animating crowd simulations. Between Character Studio and Cat, you can animate efficiently and precisely. Just like Blender, 3ds Max has a dope sheet, a graph editor, and keyframe system with basic interpolation. However, Blender also has a powerful suite of animation tools. It matches what you can do with 3ds Max while giving extra flexibility. On top of all this, Blender has tons of both free and paid add-ons to help to speed up your animation workflow that 3ds Max users don't have access to. Many artists find rigging easier inside of Blender, and to help with that, there are tons of awesome add-ons like Rigify that help to add IK and FK constraints to your rigs with control bones and just sets it up automatically to save you extra time. All things considered, Blender wins this category. Its rigging and animation tools are more advanced. But that doesn't really come as a surprise because 3ds Max is not usually used in the animation pipeline. Our next category is rendering. This is an extremely important category because without a fast and realistic render engine, both your efficiency and quality of work will tank. So for this comparison, we're going to be looking at Cycles versus Arnold. Blender obviously has Eevee built into it as well, but Eevee is a real-time render engine while both Cycles and Arnold are ray traced. Ray traced render engines are generally slower, but that's because they aren't cutting any corners. They're tracing the rays of light from the camera to give the most realistic result. Both Arnold and Cycles are excellent render engines. While both of these two maintain great quality, there is a small speed difference. Cycles is GPU based, while Arnold is CPU based. Now you can render with a GPU inside of Arnold as of the 2020 release, 
but it's not as refined as Blender's GPU system. Now for larger projects, it's best to use both GPU and CPU rendering because while the GPU is faster, it's also limited by VRAM, while CPU can tap directly into the system RAM to help load larger projects. This is now possible in Arnold through the XPU mode and in Blender through setting the CPU plus GPU in the render settings. So basically Blender's Cycles has a more refined GPU system as of Cycles X, which was introduced in Blender 3.0, and it'll generally be faster at rendering smaller scenes. While Arnold has more efficient CPU based rendering, that will be faster in larger scenes because they can tap directly into system RAM. And this is exactly what you'd expect because Arnold is more of an industry standard render engine that is generally used on larger projects while Cycles is not industry standard and it's typically used on smaller freelance projects. So it very much depends on what kinds of scenes you're going to be rendering. So because of that, I'm gonna call this one a draw. Our next category is stability. This is a forgotten category but it's extremely important. Because if you crash, in the best case scenario, you're being slowed down, but typically you're losing some progress because you're losing data as well. But in the worst case scenario, you can't even finish a project because you keep crashing. So stability is super important. I got a comment on my last video, which compared Blender and Maya, and I'll quickly read what he says. He says, I was a 3D student and was supposed to learn Maya and 3DS Max. And as a student, I had a free subscription for one year. One day, Maya crashed and decided to be impossible to start up. I tried to uninstall the program. It just was not possible for me to do so. So I had to download a Microsoft tool that uninstalls programs by force and removed it at the end. When I tried to install it back, the install wizard would not do it. The funny part is that no other program from Autodesk specifically couldn't install. I asked Autodesk for support, but they denied that my student account even existed. Even after sending them a video of how I can download everything I had permission to with no problem on their site. We repeated the same conversation like a cursed circle for six months until they got tired of me and blacklisted me, straight up ignoring me. In the meantime, I used Blender to pass the year in university. While my colleagues graduated with Maya and Max, I was carried by Blender, where I also installed it on a USB flash drive so I can carry it with me places. I don't dislike Maya because it's hard to learn and heavy, I despise it because Autodesk ruined my education and I wish them the same suffering they brought on me. This is something that's very concerning because as long as your system meets the specific system requirements, you should be able to run the program no problem. I'll go ahead and post a link to the Blender and the 3DS Max system requirements in the description. I will say Blender 4.0 has had the most crashes since Blender 2.8, but since the latest version of Blender came out, it's gotten a lot better. But one thing that I've heard a lot is that 3DS Max has support. A lot of people say that this support is the reason that it's industry standard because they can resolve issues that companies or individuals are having in their specific program. But this specific experience really casts a lot of doubt on that. You're welcome to look at the requirements and see any other cases that may have happened where Blender crashed or 3DS Max did to other people. So because I don't have more information than one case, I'm still gonna just call this category a draw. Finally, let's get into the category that I find most important. Price. This is the category that it all comes down to. Obviously, personal preference plays a huge factor as well, but if you're not willing to pay the $1,875 per year to use 3DS Max, then it's probably not gonna be worth it. However, there is a small workaround. If your projects don't generate you more than $100,000 of revenue every single year, and you live in the supported list of countries, you can use indie 3ds max this is basically just to allow artists that aren't earning a ton professionally to be able to still have access to the program using indie 3ds max you can download it for only 305 dollars per year which is a huge discount however that's still a lot more than blender a completely free program ultimately the choice is up to you if you're going to pursue a job in the industry 3ds max is probably the program for you even if you have to pay that additional cost but for many, Blender is enough. And if we look at the score, Blender is winning six 
to four because it wins the category of price as well. That's why I personally use Blender. It has the technical capabilities to fulfill what I do for professional freelance videography, as well as what I do for YouTube and my personal projects. But for you, the categories that 3ds Max won may be more important. It may still be the right program for you. And hopefully this video helped you figure out if it's worth the extra money or not. If you've learned anything, you should leave a like. And if you want to see more of my comment in future, you're welcome to subscribe.